Oh wow, they're really afraid of this woman. It's astonishing. I think libs of TikTok must be like a ray of sunlight. Because you know why they say sunlight is the best disinfectant? And she is casting sunlight on the libs. And the libs, they don't want to be disinfected. They like to stay dirty. Dirty, dirty libs. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So first they send the media after her. And they dox her. They dox her family. Uh, very ironic because the exact person doing the article doxing libs of TikTok also complained about how difficult life it is to be a woman online and how difficult it is to get harassment online. And then she sends harassment on another woman. I guess it's to prove her point, right? To show uh, the spirit of her article. And libs of TikTok is still there. But now she is being attacked by the people working at the Trust and Safety Council of Twitter. How can you be safe? How can you trust other people without a multi-billion dollar corporation hiring the Trust and Safety Committee? Now, again, if you don't know what Libs of TikTok is doing, right? She is taking videos placed by people on the internet. Like she goes on TikTok, takes a video, bloop, and then shows it to you. Literally, that's it. That, that's all that she is doing. Like there are videos already there. You would think that if you had the problem with her content, you would go to the people that actually place those videos. Like, for example, a teacher that says, oh, yes, we're going to groom the children. And they post that on TikTok, thinking that's something good. And lives off TikTok, takes that video, poop, and shows it to you. And people are like, oh, my God, look what she's doing. Look what she's doing. What, what is she doing exactly? What is she doing? <laughs> so now you have the people at the Twitter talking in a... Uh, private conversations which got leaked and the the reason i find it fascinating is that finally i get to see how these people think you know i get to see the people that keep me safe from reading harmful messages online how do they talk behind closed doors so they begin by saying if we deplatform this account we might erode the trust in our platform from users who already think we're irredeemably biased against conservatives and i guess this is the emoji showing that they're being sarcastic because let's be honest. I don't think there is a single person on planet Earth right now that believe Twitter isn't biased. There are world governments that are banning Twitter. That, that's how bad shit is. <laughs> I mean, we successfully deplatformed Trump. I don't think deplatforming libs of TikTok is going to cause a mass exodus. But I guess it may not be in our fiduciary interest to enact a ban on a high profile account right now. This is how they're thinking. And I, I've been saying this. They ban Trump. They can ban anyone. And when other governments ban Twitter, the U.S. government, which is ran by the Democrats right now, shamed the government of Nigeria for violating human rights. That's how it works, right? So Twitter can ban the accounts of the Nigerian president. The Nigerian president then bans Twitter and America is upset. Do you, do you not find something bizarre in this relationship? That Doesn't it concern you a little bit? Trans people are being targeted for genocidal violence during Pride Month. Holy fucking shit. Why aren't you calling the military then? If you genuinely think that's true. Why aren't you calling the cops? And not to mention when you said it like this, are you saying it that being targeted for genocidal outside of the Pride Month would be okay? What the fuck are you talking about? These people are insane. This is why I'm saying that the Twitter platform is filled with far leftist extremists. No one thinks like that. This is not happening. Like, do you honestly believe that libs of TikTok is going to become the next Hitler? Like, she's going to run for office. People will vote her. She's going to start her own uh, paramilitary organization and then go on the streets. Because this is literally what the people at the Twitter Trust and Safety Council believes. Like, they believe she is the next Führer. She, th they believe that she is going to get power over the United States if she is allowed to use Twitter. Like, first of all, you have to be that insane to believe that Twitter has that power. And secondly, you have to also be insane to believe that she has that influence. Ridiculous. I mean, the only thing that's happening here is a extremist tactic, okay? So this is the tactic of the far left. The far left preaches peace tranquility, love, and respect, okay? So justifying violence from this ideological framework is very difficult, but you can still do it, right? When is violence acceptable? Violence is only acceptable in self-defense. 
So if you say that another person is doing violence, then it's okay to stop them to protect the weak. So this is how the people at Twitter are viewing things. They are viewing that they are the defenders of the LGBTQ community, okay? The LGBTQ community, I want you to imagine it like an innocent baby. It's an innocent baby in the crib. And lives off TikTok wants to harm that innocent baby, so it's up to the people at Twitter to put a stop to it. That's literally how they rationalize it behind closed doors. Like I said, our expectations are low, given that when J James Damore came on with his transphobic misogyny, Twitter gave him a verified badge and let him go by fired for truth. It's very interesting that the Twitter moderators remember James Damore. Like, there are certain cases that scarred them so hard that years later they still remember those events. So for those of you who forgot, James Damore was a Google engineer. And from my understanding, he was quite a capable one at that who was fed up with the corporate culture at the time, which was dictating the fact that women don't go into the IT industry because of misogyny, okay? So men are responsible, men are gatekeeping, they're preventing women from following their dream of joining the IT industry. So men were constantly shamed, right? Like James Damore was guilty for this. He was a hideous person along with every other man because he is preventing women from joining the IT industry. Like, just so you can understand how ridiculous the culture at the time was, The Verge released an article where they harassed a scientist who managed to do the impossible by landing a shuttle on a comet. And in his day of glory and achievement, they harassed him for wearing a shirt. Like his human right, the freedom of expression to wear a shirt. The Verge released, I don't fucking care about your scientific achievement. Fuck your science, okay? I don't care. Screw Dr. Fauci. What we care about is the fact that you're wearing this shirt, which is ostracizing and it's preventing women from joining the IT industry. They don't offer any proof. They don't show any study which would uh, support their claim. No, they, they just came up with this, and you have to believe it. And James Moore was a person that didn't believe it. He said, like, fuck this shit. Why are you harassing men for? Like, we just want to code. Leave us the fuck alone. Like, here are some evidence and studies that show that maybe this is not why women don't join the IT industry. Like, maybe, just maybe, they're not interested in coding. I'm not interested in coding, right? Like, I, I wouldn't say that, oh, it's the Americans that try to keep Romanians from joining the IT industry. That's not the fucking thing. But because he did that, because he challenged that, that publications like The Verge uh, leaked... His internal memo where, where he provided with stats and evidence showing that there, there is actually no conclusive proof that women are being prevented from coding. And of course, he got fired, right? And Twitter remembers this. Like, Twitter is very upset because they gave him a blue check mark, which, by the way, is supposed to be a badge that verifies that you are that person. So someone said, I apologize, I was not speaking from my own perspective, but applying a commentary on how leadership has behaved recently. I could have phrased that better and will be more conscientious in the future messages. I despise and despair the activity. My fucking God, this is an HR person. Like, the amount of buzzwords and corpus speak is astonishing. Like, human beings don't talk this way. When I go and have a pint with Father O'Malley at the local pub, he does not speak like this. I apologize, I was not speaking from my own perspective, but applying a commentary on how- Who talks like this? Are you part of the Google AI that's recently making the news that they grew conscientious and they developed a personality? Is this what is that? I was not speaking from my own perspective by applying a commentary on how leadership has behaved recently. I could have phrased it better, but I despise and I despair the activity that is currently flourishing. Who uses the word flourishing? Who the fuck uses the word flourishing? When is the last time you used it, huh? Are you flourishing on my comment section right now? Are, are you flourishing on my channel, Mr. Flourisher? Who uses flourishing? Look at this. They are empowering white supremacists and fascists. On Twitter, on the far left extremist platform that is the Twitter, you honestly think that white supremacists are getting empowered? Who are these people? I would love to have a conversation with them. I would love to talk with these Twitter moderators just, just to see how they think, to, to analyze how they think. 
it, it, it's like just so bizarre. But these are the people that get to decide what content you are and aren't allowed to watch. Holy shit. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.